Hi everybody, I'm Jeremy Pettis, joined as always by my good friend colleague, Steve Edelman. We're both endocrinologists living with type 1 diabetes, both work at the not-for-profit organization Taking Control of Your Diabetes, and we're joined by our good friend, Aaron Kowalski, who's the CEO of now Breakthrough T1D, and we're going to be talking about kind of breakthroughs in type 1 diabetes research, so who better to do this with, TCYD, JDRF, T1D, Breakthrough, Collab. So Aaron, talk to us a little bit of how at Breakthrough T1D, like what buckets you place research into. There's so much going on. How do you kind of tell people these different categories? Yeah, our mission is accelerating life-changing breakthroughs to cure, prevent, and treat T1D and its complications. So we kind of bucket it like that. We call it improving lives. So I always think of that as being healthy when we get to cures. Preventing type 1 is what we call disease-modifying therapies, changing the course of type 1. And then curing, we focus a lot on cellular replacement. So I guess starting with improving lives, um, within that we kind of have the technology, other medications. So, you know, we're all on three different systems. We're all living with type 1 diabetes, and God bless all these advances that have happened that have allowed us to do that. But what's your thinking at Breakthrough T1D? How do you approach technology now, specifically your interactions with companies? How does that work? Yeah, I've come 20 years now at Breakthrough T1D, formerly JDRF, and a lot of my work was on the device side, and we've come a long, long way. I wear a hybrid closed loop. We're all wearing hybrid closed loops. The goal for us there is miniaturization, more automated, and more plug and play. So really, all the companies are doing a great job. We're trying to fill some niches there. On the other side of the equation, it's for, forever we've only used insulin. And could you use other drugs, what we call adjunctive therapies like uh, the GLP drugs or SGLT inhibitors, to make our blood sugar better? and reduce the risk for complications. Yeah, and also trying to get rid of the H in the hybrid closed loop. Yeah. Just, you don't have the bolus anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's one step closer to that. I think one of the hardest things us folks with type ones do is remember to take your insulin 20 to 30 minutes before you eat. You know, there are very, very few of us can do that, which yeah. always limits the roller coaster. And I'm glad to hear you mention these, these other medications. You know, you turn on the TV, there's so many commercials for Zempic, Monjaro. People with type 2 have been using these for a long time. You're going to cry again? Yeah. <laughs> he gives <laughs> me a hard time because I'm always <laughs> saying I'm jealous of people with type 2 that get to use these medications. When can we use them in, in people with type 1? And, you know, this is something I'm very passionate about. And actually, Breakthrough T1D is, is funded. Um, a lot of the research that we're doing here at UCSD, particularly in this space. And so, Eric, I, I think we have a, a clip live from the, the lab that we can show. So let's let's play that now. My God, can it be? Research has done it again. So obviously, you know, a little bit of a joke there, but um, it, it's an important area to me. And, and how do you think about that at Breakthrough T1D? Well, type two labels are out there, but not type one. Mm -hmm. We don't have FDA approval for them and reimbursement is very difficult. So at Breakthrough T1D, we are so focused on making these drugs available, not just for type 2 people, but also for type 1s. Again, helping our blood sugars be better under control, but also reducing the risk of diabetic complications. You know, I think that's huge because the most common reason why us type 1s pass away, hate to get morbid, is cardiovascular disease. And those SGLT2s are so effective at reducing the progression of chronic kidney disease. So we need them. Yeah. Uh, it's not just glucose. Absolutely. 100%. All right, so our lives are improved. We're leaving improving lives behind, check. So the next category, <laughs> disease-modifying therapies. What does disease-modifying mean? What's going on in that space? Yeah, so I always say that we have lived uh, for 100 years with type 1 diabetes before insulin. It was fatal. Now we have had insulin, but we've treated the disease. We haven't fixed the underlying autoimmune problem. And that's what we call disease-modifying, changing the course of the disease. So people who are at risk, don't get it or get it later. Uh, and for the first time ever, we have a drug that does this. It's called teplizumab, or now the brand name is T-Zealed, 25 plus years of research. Uh, but it does delay the course of the disease. And for us, our goal is to get that out to people who are at risk and to prolong that, uh, that uh, insulin production, hopefully forever, mm -hmm. but longer and longer than the three years that it does now. Yeah. That initial study showed that delayed the onset of full-blown type 1 diabetes for two to three years, 
And we all agree, that's huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially with the rate of advancements in type one. So <laughs> there could be a completely different world three years from now. It's important for folks listening that have type one to work screening their first and second degree relatives yeah. for sure. That's so important. Thinking about getting type one when you're eight versus 11. Yeah. I mean, so much goes on in a child's life. So, and so many developments in this area that we're talking to endocrinologists again about, this is an autoimmune disease. What does a T cell do? Because we haven't been doing that for so long. It's been about glucose and glucose control and insulin. And now, oh yeah, we can actually treat the disease itself. Such an important advance in this, you know, in this space. So final category. Um, cellular therapies. And I think about this in terms of we've all had type 1 for a long time. We're doing our best, trying to get our blood sugars under control, wearing the pumps, the CGMs. But man, could I get some beta cells back? Could I get some <laughs> of them stem cells? You know, so what's that about? What's going on in that space? And this is an area that's gone back when we were able to cure people with uh, what we call deceased donor islets. So somebody who donated their organs, including their pancreas, could cure people with type 1, but it was very, very limited. Imagine if we could scale those cells and make them available for everyone. And that's where stem cells come in, making those cells into insulin-producing cells, transplanting them into people. First trials are going on, people are coming off insulin. It's amazing. What we're focused on at Breakthrough T1D is immunosuppression-free versions of these cells because the first products will require immunosuppressants. I think they'll help people tremendously, but it'll be a relatively narrow group of people. We want this to be available for everybody. I firmly believe this is the pathway for my brother and I to take off our pumps, and we're going to be investing heavily there. Yeah. How soon? How soon? Well, the data suggests that the very first product, which is being made by Vertex, could be available this decade, based upon how many trial participants they have in their trials. Again, that's for people who have severe hypoglycemia problems, uh, multiple severe hypos in a short amount of time, or people who are already on immunosuppressants. But I mean, in this decade, yeah. I think we'll see the first people get cellular cures. Yep. Let's hold them to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, ready. you know, it's just such a quick recap of what's going on, but like, it's, I think it's overwhelming in a good way. One, these hybrid closed loop technologies, literally every month, every six months, something brand new is coming out. Two, the first ever approved drug to help delay the onset of type 1 diabetes. And three, looking towards the future of actually curing the disease. So thank you so much for doing this with us. This has been a lot of fun. Gets me excited to hear about these things um, and spend some time with my fellow type 1 friends. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. That's a great partnership. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's go get some eyelets for lunch. <laughs> <laughs>